Today, I'm going to show you how you can heat your building completely naturally without having to consume any energy. And with this, you can reduce your energy bills up to 80%, which is a lot of savings. So I'm going to walk through the three main principles that we integrate in our buildings to make our buildings completely heated naturally. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is solar distribution. See, the thing is, the natural world has a power plant and it's called the sun. And if we really understand how the sun works, we can actually build our buildings to maximize solar gain where it's needed and reduce solar gain in other climates where it's needed. So basically, if we take a, a, a simple building um, with a sloped roof, and what you need to take into account when you are designing a building is that the sun has different angles throughout different seasons. And in winter time, it has a very low angle. And in summertime, it has a very high angle. So in winter time, if you are in a cold climate, you want to maximize the solar gain in your building. So in winter time, the sun angle is very shallow. It doesn't have a big angle. While in the summer, it has a much higher angle. So you need to design your building in a way that you allow the winter sun to enter your building. So the first most important thing is orientation. So before you place your building on your plot, you want to look, where is my sunny side? So if you are in the northern hemisphere, then your sunny side is going to be south. While if you're in the southern hemisphere, your sunny side is going to be north. So once you've oriented your building towards the sun, then you need to basically design the proportions of your building accordingly to the angle of the sun. And here are some of the key features you need to have in mind. See, the, the depth of, of the building itself, which means this dimension. So this is a section of the building, no? This is... This is you inside your house. And how deep your building is, is fundamental. So let's say, you know, you decide to have a 10 meter width of your building. Now, then what you need to do is to see, okay, out of these 10 meter in the winter, how far do I get the sun to come inside of my building? So if you do your sun study and you see, well, you just get it to come in halfway, which is five meter. Now, if you're in a really, really cold climate, what you want to achieve and aim for is that you want the sun to actually reach all the way to the back. Because that's very much related to the next uh, concept, which is thermal storage, that I'm going to tell you all about. But before I do that as well, you need to have the summer sun in mind. So in summer, when the sun is really, really hot, it's very important that you design your roof of your building in a way that you're actually blocking the sun to enter your building. So in this sketch, you can see I have an overhang. Now, the question is, uh, overhang means when the roof hangs over your wall. Now, the question is, how long should my overhang be? How, how, how long should this be? Well, the right way to determine that is for you to study your summer angle of the sun. So you make sure your roof overhang would block the sun from coming in. 
So by simply taking the right design decision for the depth of your building and the overhang, you can basically regulate how much sun you're taking in during summer and how much you're taking in during winter. And by just nailing this, you can achieve comfortable storage inside of your home. Now, the next trick, which is thermal storage, it's a completely forgotten knowledge when it comes to architecture and construction. See, in ancient times, this was a common practice. It was very clear that when you design buildings, you need to design them to store temperatures. So today, because we have mechanical heating systems, we have lost this knowledge and we're constantly just heating our buildings with, with fossil fuels or with electricity in, in, in general. So there's another way to do it. So this is called thermal storage. So what we do in our building is that inside the building, um, we create something that is called thermal storage. So behind your wall on, uh, on this side, which this would be your south side, your sunny side, and this would be your north side, we create a area where we collect temperatures. So depending on the project, this can be different kind of materials. This can be compacted earth, or it can be stone walls, for example, like this wall right behind me. See, materials like stone that has a very high density have no air gaps, which means that they can store temperatures naturally. So if you have a stone wall, for example, if this wall here is a stone wall and you've designed your solar distribution in the right way that in winter the some the, the the sun is able to reach all the way back to your wall this wall is going to absorb the heat and bring it back to your thermal storage this is you can see it as a battery it's like a battery that stores temperatures completely naturally so then behind that thermal mass we have a layer let me get another color to make it clear for you, I will use blue here. We have a layer of, of insulation. So this layer will help you to keep your thermal storage charged so it doesn't go outside. So what happens is that at night, when the temperatures drop outside, then the temperatures of your room is going to also wanting to drop. As soon as it starts getting a little bit colder inside, what's happening because of physics, because heat always moves from warm to cold, what's going to happen at night is that the temperatures that you stored here is going to start sipping out into your living area and maintain this space comfortable. So by combining solar distribution, understanding the angles of the sun, by integrating thermal storage inside the structures of your building, you can already achieve very good temperatures inside your house and save yourself a lot of utility bills. Now, if you're in a very cold climate, you also want to have something else in mind, which is a natural way of reducing the heat loss. Because when it gets really cold in winter, this heat that is in your living area is gonna want to escape outside because outside is even colder. So one way we have solved this, which works really, really amazingly, is that we add an additional structure in the front of the building. And this, my friends, is what we call the greenhouse. So this is your living area. 
this is where you live. And then this part of your building is your greenhouse. So inside this greenhouse, we uh, produce food, fruits and vegetables all year round. But this greenhouse has a fundamental uh, effect when it comes to reducing your heat loss. So this is the aspect of creating a natural insulation. So another word for this is a buffered zone. See, this greenhouse slash buffered zone, now what it does is that it creates a microclimate in here. So between the outside world and your living area, there is a microclimate. It also works a little bit like the clothes, like our body is, is naked, but then when we put clothes on it, that layer of clothes help to reduce the heat loss of our body. So the greenhouse does the same thing. So now these temperatures that are wanting to escape outside, it's going to be way more challenging for them because before they can reach outside, they have to first travel through this greenhouse. And this greenhouse will help you to not lose so much heat. So if you're in a cold climate, you know, if, if you're in Northern Europe, for example, if you are in Sweden, Denmark, uh, Finland, or even Germany, uh, you want to make sure that your building has a natural insulation layer, a buffer zone that will reduce the heat loss. So basically, my friends, if you combine these three principles already in the blueprint of your design, you will save yourself a lot of uh, money because you won't need to heat your building by using conventional heating system or air conditioning system. You will basically build a building that relies on the sun. And the good thing with the sun is that it doesn't have any maintenance. And then good thing with the thermal storage is that you can store the temperatures of the sun when the sun is not shining. And the amazing thing with the greenhouse and the natural insulation is that you can reduce your heat loss and save yourself a lot of money. And if you also want to learn more about how to cool your building naturally, then watch the video here and you will understand in more depth how you can cool your buildings. And if you want to really, really get into the details of this, then join our Biotonomy Academy and learn more. Thank you.